Today we're going to have a look at the Trend Micro Vision 1 Content Pack for Palo Alto Network's Cortex-Xor. We'll start by searching for the Content Pack in the Marketplace so that we can install it into our Cortex-Xor instance. So if we do a quick search for Vision 1, we'll find the integration from here. We can install it into our instance and choose Install. Once the installation is complete, we can refresh the content and now go and configure the integration. So if we jump into the settings and search for our newly installed integration, we should see it here. Um, the first step you need to do is add an instance of this integration. And in the description of the integration, you will find details about how to obtain the necessary credentials uh, from Vision, Trend Micro Vision 1 that will be needed to configure this instance. Um, we also provide some guidance on what the role permission should be to make sure you have a role that has adequate permission but not too much for um, the actions you'll be taking in Vision 1 through the uh, Cortex-XOR platform. So we'll jump over to Vision 1 where I've already pre-populated a role with the necessary permissions. So you'll see in here we have a Cortex XOR role and on the permissions you can see um, it doesn't need permissions to everything so I would not use a master administrator account for this but you can specify the permissions as we documented in the integration. From here you then want to create a user account based on that role and within the user account um, because this is for an integration, it doesn't need to have access um, to the console. It's API only access. And we will then copy the authentication token over to our instance. Uh, this, in, this integration does fetch incidents. So we want to make sure we check that box when configuring. We will provide our API key we just retrieved from Vision 1. And there's a few settings here, such as how frequently do you want to look for new uh, workbench alerts in Vision 1 and synchronize those. The default's five minutes. How far back do you want to go on your first synchronization? So um, you may just want to go from this integration forward or to this day forward. But you also may want to, uh, you know, on your first sync, go back 30 days and uh, and look at some incidents that you or some workbench alerts you've had previously. And each interval, it will fetch a maximum of 50 incidents. So if there are more than there should not be more than 50 workbenches, but if there are, it will uh, do multiple syncs in order to uh, to catch up with all of the incidents. So from here, we can we can hit the test button to make sure. Everything is configured correctly. We get a success message and we can save and exit. So now we've got our instance uh, configured. It's going to take some time to synchronize those workbench alerts the first time. So while, while we're waiting for that, we can take a look at what commands do we provide through this integration in the Cortex XOR platform. So we've got commands to uh, add and remove objects from the exception list. In Vision 1, we've got commands to add and remove objects to the suspicious object list. We've got a check status command here that can be used to check on um, tasks that may run for a little while, like a sandbox submission or collecting a file or isolating an endpoint. We've got the command to collect a forensic file from an endpoint during an investigation. We've got commands to delete or quarantine email messages from users' mailboxes. We've got commands to um, get retrieve information about an endpoint, which can be useful in a playbook. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. We've got commands to submit to Sandbox for analysis and retrieve the reports. Um, we've got uh, isolate and, and restore connection commands. And if you want to uh, disconnect a machine from the network during an investigation, and I believe that's it. Oh, and we can also terminate a process through Vision 1 from Cortex-XOR. So if we take a look at this incident, we can see 
that it's a Trend Micro Vision 1 XDR incident. It's populated some indicators that extracted automatically from the incident. And if we take a look at the Vision 1 tab, you can see that there's a link directly to the workbench. So if you wanted to hop over into Vision 1 to take a look at some of the information, um, the highlights, you can do that. Or you can also see all of the entities associated with this incident in the table and the indicators as well. So we provide the, the, the details from the Vision 1 incident in the Vision 1 tab within Cortex-XOR. One of the powers of Cortex-XOR is obviously the ability to execute playbooks. So we created an example playbook of one use case where we think the, um, related to credential dumping, where we think automation can help security analysts as they investigate. So what this playbook does is, as you can see as we walk through it, the first thing it does is to check, is this incident type credential dump, related to credential dumping? If not, just jump to the end, there's no reason to continue. However, if it is a credential dumping incident, the first thing we want to do is fetch some information from the endpoint. This will gather details such as the uh, operating system, the Trend Micro product running on the endpoint, the information needed in order to, to proceed to the next step. From there, we'll output that information into the Collect Forensic File command so that it can actually instruct Vision 1 to go out to the endpoint and collect that file and retrieve it back to the Vision 1 platform. This can take a few minutes, so we next run a check status, and the check status will continuously, uh, every 30 seconds, check to see if the collection of the file is completed, and if so, then it'll proceed to ask Vision 1, where can I retrieve this file from? And lastly, it uses a retrieve file command in Cortex-XOR to pull that file into the war room so the analysts can investigate. So the flow here is basically what we're trying to do is if it's a credential dumping uh, event, we may want to get the actual dump file to see what, it, what accounts the, uh, the threat actor may have had access to. So the security analyst can take a look at the, the credential dump to see if passwords need to be reset for certain accounts um, to see the, the scope of, of what may have been retrieved. Well, that's a brief overview of the Trend Micro Vision 1 content pack for Cortex-XOR. Uh, there are endless possibilities of playbooks to create leveraging the commands we've made available and the data already available through the Cortex-XOR platform. And we hope to see many customers take advantage of this. Thank you.